Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring in this lovely little ticket um, from Worlds of Wonder by Johanna Basford. Now on this ticket page I've already coloured three, I'll just show you. This one I coloured with um, 12 polychromos pencils, this one I coloured with my um, Castle Out botanical set and this one I coloured with Black Widows. I thought it might be fun to carry on with this sort of theme and to colour this particular one with a different set of pencils again and just go through the page using different pencils and just have a bit of a fun with it. So I have picked out this set of pencils. Now these are Norris Colour. They are made by Stedler. Um, I don't know they say Stedler, or right at the bottom there, Stedler. They may have changed their packaging since some of these. And you can see they just come in this cardboard box. I'm going to tip them out beside me. And they've got, and I'll show you, they've got this sort of stripy um, cover. So they're a little bit different to the Ergosoft, which I haven't used on this page yet, but I intend to, in that they're a bit harder. Now, I won these in a competition. I was very, very lucky. Now, one thing that is annoying about these is that there are no numbers or names on any of them so when I'm colouring I won't be able to um, tell you exactly what I'm using but we'll wing it and we'll see what happens so firstly I'm gonna have a go and uh, just get going really and we'll see what what happens and what they're like so I'm gonna start with a little doll and uh, we need to do her face um, to start with I think now I find skin tones quite difficult with many sets. I know there are lovely sets of pencils that do have um, skin tones um, in them, but this set doesn't. And what I tend to do with my Ergosoft pencils is to combine the peachy colour, like this, with the light brown. And I'm just trying to find the light brown because there's only 24 here. There's a few less than I'm used to having. So that's the lightest brown. Oof, or is that one lighter? No, definitely not. So we're going to have to combine those two and just hope. Because there's only 24 here, not... Um, what I'm trying to do also in the background on my computer, I might sound a little distracted. I'm trying to bring up a picture of a doll like this so I know how to colour her. So I'm going to start with the face though. So I've got this peachy colour and just do a very light... Um, layer. Gosh, it doesn't really show up. It's such a hard pencil that I'm going to have to press a little bit harder than I was intending. Now, her face isn't really skin colour. It's um, more of a sort of wood colour, I think. So uh, I'm just putting in a bit of this peachy colour. You can see it's beginning to um, develop the colour. You have to build up the layers with these, as I say, because they're quite hard but uh, we'll have a go. So there's that and I'm just going to be really careful and add the lightest layer of this that I possibly can. Because they're a hard pencil, I have the, an advantage here that I can't get loads of color out of it. So that is good because I can get just a really light tone and it just darkens it ever so slightly. I hope you can see that there's a change there in colour a little bit. It's not easy to see. I'm keeping those aside. I'm not sure why. I can't list the colour numbers because uh, there aren't any. So this is the darkest pink colour, reddish pink. And I'm just going to use it for her cheeks, her little, these little circular bits. I think they're really cute. Now these dolls tend to have, I, as I've just looked to confirm, because I thought I was going mad, but I wasn't, tend to have a yellow scarf and a red dress. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna find the nearest to red. Again, we have a slight <clears throat> difficulty because we don't have a red red. This is an orangey red. I'm gonna put this down. And I'm gonna sort of draw a line here and here where I'm gonna go into the yellow. And I'm just going to try and do quite a dark layer of red. Now, I don't think I've used these pencils very much at all because the ends are quite square as if they haven't even been sharpened. So I may sharpen them. Now, there's a few main differences between these and the Ergo Softs, not just the um, hardness. 
These are harder, they're, less, they're not so soft. These tend to be ones that in the UK they have in primary schools for children to use. But they're hexagonal rather than triangular. Now I'm not sure what difference that makes. I'm just going to give this a sharpen and do another layer. Um, it, when you're using them long term, whether that makes a difference with regards to how um, much it might hurt your hand, I don't know. Well, that's quite a nice colour. It's quite pinky red. I thought it was orange, but now I'm looking at it. Is it pink? I don't know. Maybe not. It looks oranger in oranger. More orange in the camera um, screen than it does to my eyes in the more um, natural, well, I say natural. It is sunny in here, but I've got my lamp on. So uh, I tend to pop it on when I'm recording. I think it makes it better. It's also hard to tell. There we go. I've got a few scratchy lines here where I'm struggling to get it even. I'm going to try and pick up the other colour that looks really red. I'm just looking at, we've got these two as well. Um, I'm not sure which is red. I think I'll go for this one. It's quite tricky. And look at in the ends of these two. They look almost the same. So it's, it's it's tricky, but fun at the same time. I guess you get used to it. Now I'm pushing down quite hard with this, but it actually feels like I've burnished a bit too hard. I can't really get another layer on top. So we may have to just leave it there. So we don't get the really vibrant red colour that I was hoping for. But I knew that would be a risk with this particular set of pencils. But we may get it to work. Now Yellow's doing her scarf. We've got these two. Now I'm tempted to go for this one because it's a bit lighter. But I don't know how well it's going to show up. So I'm just going to go for it. See what happens really. See if it shows up. I think it may show up more if we think carefully about that background as well. Now I'm just doing hard blocking out of colour here at the moment and I will um, do something a bit um, sort of lighter I suppose later and try and see how well they blend. I'm going to try and find a black um, for the hair. I can find this. It's got grey and black on the barrel, but I reckon that's black. There we've got a light grey, so I think this is the black. And this, again, needs to be dark because on the doll, which, as I say, I've just referenced one on my screen, um, there's white shine on the hair, like with a which we would like do with a gel pen rather than um, sort of doing a texture within the colour, if that makes sense. It's because it's a painted dull and it's shiny, varnishy glaze. There's a shine. So there we go with the black. Now we have the tie bit on the scarf. Now in the dolls that I'm looking at, it's patterned. I think that's going to be a bit too tricky for me. I think I might just do the yellow because it's quite a little area. I'm just going to do it like that in the yellow. And it just contrasts with the red then. Okay, we've got leaves to now, so I'm going to grab a green. I'll show you what we've got green-wise. We have got these three greens. So we've got a sort of olivey green, a mid-green, and a more of a bluey green. So I'm going to go for this middle green here. And I'm going to do all the leaves just with one hard pressure. Because they're quite small, I don't know how well this blends. We're going to try that out in the background. So get all these little leaves done. Now the, trying to see what colour the background of the doll is. Looks like the same as her face. On this one that I'm looking at, I'm just going to move my mouse and have a proper look. Yeah. So the background is the same colour as her face. So we'll do that in a minute. And we've got this sort of rose, which is quite pink. Now I've got this pink, but I think that's a little pale. And we've got these two. 
Um, I can't see a big difference between them. I think I'm going to go for that middle one. And now I want to I might try and go a little bit darker on the edge and fade it towards the edge of the leaf and see whether I can get that to work with these. I have seen, I have to say, some absolutely stunning work done with these pencils. So I know that you can do lovely things with them, but I'm just not sure if I've got the patience to uh, keep layering them up all the time. There we go. We have got a little bit of a contrast between the colour there. Now the base, I'm going to do yellow. I think it will just sort of even out that the colours. I haven't got a base in any of the pictures that I'm looking at, so that's just what I think will work. Now we'll do this background again, so we'll go back to our peachy colour, which is like the lightest orange, I guess. And what I did for the face was I did two layers of this. I remember doing the second one a bit harder because it didn't seem to show up. And then a bit of the darker, a bit of the brown. I'm sorry this isn't the most useful video in that I can't tell you the numbers of the pencils, but I think it'd just be interesting to see how she comes out compared to like the other pictures because the other pencils are quite vibrant so these are quite different. Now I'm going to do the stars next just because I've already decided that I'm going to do them this darker yellow colour and then it sort of helps us choose all the other colours really. Now I'm thinking some blues in the background there and purples maybe because we haven't used them yet make it more interesting. I'm just blocking these out quite hard because uh, Oops, just moving a piece of paper that I've, I've got a piece of paper behind this page so that there isn't any ink transfer from the picture on the back to the one on the facing page. It wasn't quite lined up, so I'm just pushing it in because I don't want to do that. I don't know what's on the back. Some of the colours I've used are quite vibrant. So, right, blues and purple. This is what we've got blues and purple wise. Now, I am thinking that maybe we do the same one here and here, here and here, here and here and here and here. But we've only got one purple and one of our blues looks a bit greeny, that one. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work with the purple. Maybe we'll save the purple for around the stars and do these four blues in the background. I think that's the best idea. I'll just reject that purple for a moment. I'm just going to grab a random blue and what I think I'm going to try and do is try and get a darker layer of blue around the doll and then fade it a bit towards the centre, keeping it dark on the edge there fade it a bit towards the centre and then take it dark here and fade it towards the middle so we might look like we've got a bit of a sort of shine effect going on. I don't know whether this was such a good idea. Actually I might make it dark all the way around the edge and fade it towards the middle. We did that effect on some of the others and it looked quite good. That's it. I can see that there is a difference as I put down more layers. You can definitely see that this bit's lighter, so that's good. So it just shows that you can get a lighter tone. And we're going to do this opposite one. So this time I'll do it properly. So take a nice dark layer around the edge. And then reduce the amount of layers and the amount of pressure towards the middle. Now it's, I find it fascinating what you can do with a budget pencil like this one. But I think you do need to be careful. Um, I'm picking, this is the very darkest blue I'm picking now I think. Um, because if you're new to colouring and you haven't got 
learnt all the techniques and you haven't built up the muscles in your hand for colouring, then I think you might get put off by the amount of effort that it might take you to get a nice colour and a nice technique out of a cheaper set of pencils. There are big differences between budget brands. And these are super cheap, as I say, these are student grade. They're not designed to be for artists, so they really are a cheap, cheapy cheap. Whereas if you go to something like Black Widows or Castle Art, they're often still considered to be budget brands because they are a lot cheaper than, say, Caran d'Ache or something like that. But um, you still get a much easier sort of it's easier to get a good technique you don't have to push down so hard with them but some people really like a hard pencil they like taking their time building up layers they enjoy a delicate finish which you can get more easily with a hard pencil with a soft pencil if they're very vibrant and they put down a lot of color you can't soften it down so it really is quite personal as well with regards to what you like and dislike so that's interesting but uh, as I say I'm actually not minding these Norris as much as I thought I had said to someone who I know uses lots of Norris that I was going to try them again and I, it's taken me all the, that was at Christmas and it's now May so I'm just getting around to trying them and uh, as I say, not too bad. Better than I thought. I am going to keep them out of the drawer. Gosh, I've got to remember which ones I've used and which I haven't used now. I'm going to keep them out of the drawer. I'm actually quite excited about um, the fact that I'm going to be... We're going to get someone in to talk to us about putting up some shelves in the house. Um, some above my desk here so I can lay out my art materials better. So at the moment, my current books that I'm doing are all stuffed in a bag. Ones that I've already done are in a storage box and I can't get to them. So if someone says, oh, has anyone done this picture in this book? Can you show me a photo for some inspiration or whatever? Or if I'm trying to find a picture for my website when I'm writing an article or something, it's really difficult because I've got to open a box, take all the little things off the tops, search through, find the books, blah, blah, blah. It's really tricky. It'd be so useful to just have them up on a shelf. Um, obviously, I have to watch out with dust and things, but I think it'll be okay. And uh, so that's, um, that's quite exciting. That looks really similar to that, but it isn't the same. I sh assure you it is just slightly different. I don't know how, it might be easier to see because my camera screen is so teeny um, I can't necessarily see the detail that you can. So again we're just using the same technique round and round. See so we've got all excited about these shelves, we've contacted someone to ask them to pop round and do us a quote but we haven't heard back so uh, he may not uh, even be able be interested in the work and then that would be really sad and we wouldn't go ahead so I'm really hoping that he is going to want to do it it's just windy today I'm sure I can hear someone's recycling bin blowing around outside the last one is this more greeny blue I'm a bit worried about this but I'm just going to go in with it and see what happens because uh, I think it looks like green but uh, we'll see Mm, I still think that looks like green. I think it is. I think greens and blues, sometimes the jaw is out on which is which. I'm going to have to go with it. Because <laughs> uh, me and my husband don't agree sometimes. My dad reckons that there's a difference between men and women in colours and what they see and things. But I know my husband's colour blind, so obviously there is a difference. And he'll still argue with me about what's this colour and that colour. And I'll say, hoi, you're colour blind. Would you know? I'm not normally that rude. Um, but uh, he, uh, when you say, I think turquoises are quite tricky to, uh, to say whether it's a sort of turquoise green or a turquoise blue. I guess if we make the colour ourselves with our pencils, then we know 
you know, if we combine a blue and a yellow, um, um, make a green with a blue, a yellow, then we know if it's got more blue or more yellow, what sort of tone it will be. But uh, I do find it funny that he says he's colourblind and yet he manages to do art without any trouble. We actually did a, um, I'm trying to, we did a picture together, it was lovely. Not the same, we've got the same book and we had to go at colouring the same picture from the same book. And now this is the purple. It looks quite blue, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to um, go around here. I'm going to probably do a little bit darker and fade it towards the centre. I don't know if it'll work. I'll give it a go. Um, so we did the same page, which was great fun, but the page had three buildings on. Um, this was from this book, actually, Worlds of Wonder. It had three buildings on, so I did all three. And uh, he just did one. He is so naughty, he's not finished a picture from the book yet. Whereas I tend not to, I don't like leaving a page unfinished. Now with this ticket page, it's been sitting here unfinished because I've been using it for making videos with, so I can't finish it. And it doesn't feel quite so wrong because, um, because I know I'm going to come back to it. I'm using it for recording and each little picture is finished. So uh, I'm just going back and forth from the bottom to the top to try and add a few layers to try and get that fade working and looking like it's faded. It's quite difficult to get, I've got a bit of a splodge here, to get it looking really even, but uh, it's getting there. It's like these aren't really that perfect. It's I find it easier. There's a lot of pencils which are easier than these to get that effect. But I'm actually quite surprised at how much colour I can get out of these. When I the first Norris pencils that I used were when I very first started colouring. Interestingly, um, I printed off some downloads from Johanna's website before having buy, bought any of her books, and, and these were from Secret Garden. That's when she first started, and um, I didn't have any pencils. And my husband had was doing art and he had some Norris, these, not this set, and um, he let me borrow them to colour with. And uh, I look back at that first piece with great pleasure actually, it's lovely, fun, and um, but it's, um, um, I found it really difficult, I remember, to do any shading or anything, because, uh, but I didn't really know much about shading with pencils or anything. Right, my last layer, the very outside, I've decided I'm going to do in grey. I think it will just work because we've got browns and oranges that we haven't used but I'm really, they're not really going to work. I'm just going to grab the grey and uh, I think it'll work. We might need to add some black. Did I have a black? I used a black earlier, didn't I? Yes, for the hair. So uh, I'm going to try and make it darker on the corners like I have with the other tickets and we'll just see if it works really. So anyway that first picture I did, I did with Norris, I did a few and he actually had some Ergosoft as well. He's a bit naughty, he gave me his Norris which he didn't like as much and uh, didn't tell me about the old Ergosoft so he let me borrow some of those and they were much better so he bought me some of my own. He's very, he doesn't like sharing his art materials um, very much. I share mine with him, he doesn't share his with me. But he uh, mainly does watercolour these days and I'm not, I'm not a fan of painting. I'm an admirer of people who can do watercolour. I'm too messy. I'm a messy, splodgy colourer anyway and don't mind colourist I should say and I don't mind if things go out the line a little bit but when I do watercolour I just have no control whatsoever and I just it just looks messy and I'm just not keen. I also worrying about saturating the page with too much water so uh, I don't do that. What I must do is print some pages off some of them Johanna's downloads and have a go. I did actually I had a go in an artist's edition with some paint and ugh. anyway we won't uh, we won't dwell on that. Was a, I tried to do something with pinks and it just looked ugh, horrible. But uh, anyway, 
I know it needs practice and if I practiced it looks quite graphite pencil -y, this I think if I am practiced more I would improve of course I would but I'd rather improve on my pencils I'm improving all the time and I think it's really interesting looking at how much we improve now just to tell you how I'm getting this darker and lighter effect it's just to do with the pressure I'm using I'm pushing down harder when I want it darker really I'm not going over it with lots of um, layers I'm just pushing harder which is not always the best um, technique because uh, you can push down and dent the page if you're using a thin book you end up having an indentation on the back and I have found that happening in it's odd because I know Johanna's books are often all printed on the same paper but Magical Jungle seems to often get indentations on it maybe it's because my version's old I don't know whereas Worlds of Wonder I've not found that in any of them but uh, anyway we have finished what I'm going to do is grab a white gel pen and just do a little bit of shine on her hair if I can find the right one here we go I'm going to use the number 10 it's quite thick because the shine is here and it's oddly in a little square and then there's a little bit there a little bit there and a couple of bits on the bottom I've just realized there is a base on this doll and it's red hey ho never mind but uh, ours is yellow there we go so she is finished so I hope um, you like her I think she looks pretty cute um, I think I'm quite interested with those pencils I think they'll need a lot of um, work for me to you know get some technique going with them because I sort of just expected them to work like the Ergosoft but I think that was a fun um, fun little one to do I hope you enjoyed it um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring